Hey, my friends, we will be right back to the show, but I have a question for you. Are you struggling with the impact of childhood trauma? Well, know that you're not alone. I'm here to let you know that I'm starting a brand new weekly coaching group that includes a year of live coaching, accountability, support, habit and goal setting, and more. I'm starting a wait list for the group right now, and I'm only taking a handful of people. And I'll let you know that through this personalized coaching, we'll work together to help you understand how your childhood trauma has shaped your beliefs, behaviors, emotions, and will help you create a roadmap for healing and growth. Right now, you can schedule an absolutely free coaching session with me and get put on the wait list if you go to thinkunbroken.com. My friends, it's your time to turn your trauma into triumph, breakdowns into breakthroughs, and become the hero of your own story. And I'm here to support you in doing that. Just go to thinkunbroken.com to register for a free coaching call with me and to get put on the wait list for the brand new weekly coaching program. We'll be right back to the show. But before we do, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, Factor Mills. Dot com, where if you go to factormills.com slash unbroken50 and use the code unbroken50, you can get 50% off your first order. That's factormills.com slash unbroken50. If you're like me and you are a person who is busy trying to create a life, heal, work on their health, wealth, and relationships, and not to mention deal with the day-to-days of normal life, you do not have time to be going to the grocery store and trying to figure out what you're going to cook every single day of the week. In fact, one time I did the math and I realized I was spending over 15 hours a week at the grocery store and cooking. When I added factor, I got to use that time for myself, for my family, for my friends, for my community, and for my business. And so if you're in the place where you need some more support in the kitchen, head to factormills.com slash unbroken50 and use the code unbroken50 to get 50% off. Hey, my friends, we will be right back to the show, but I have a question for you. Are you struggling with the impact of childhood trauma? Well, know that you're not alone. I'm here to let you know that I'm starting a brand new weekly coaching group that includes a year of live coaching, accountability, support, habit and goal setting, and more. I'm starting a wait list for the group right now, and I'm only taking a handful of people. And I'll let you know that through this personalized coaching, we'll work together to help you understand how your childhood trauma has shaped your beliefs, behaviors, emotions, and will help you create a roadmap for healing and growth. Right now, you can schedule an absolutely free coaching session with me and get put on the wait list if you go to thinkunbroken.com. My friends, it's your time to turn your trauma into triumph, breakdowns into breakthroughs, and become the hero of your own story. And I'm here to support you in doing that. Just go to thinkunbroken.com to register for a free coaching call with me and to get put on the wait list for the brand new weekly coaching program. What's up, Unbroken Nation? Hello, my friends. I'm Michael Unbroken, host of the Think Unbroken podcast and founder of thinkunbroken.com. And I'm honored to be your trauma coach and mentor because I believe that everyone is capable of getting unstuck, cultivating self-love, and becoming the hero of their own story. I believe that when implemented correctly, the practical tools and education you will receive from this show will help you lead an unbroken and extraordinary life. I believe that no matter what we come from, that we all have the ability to choose ourselves first, to create and manifest a powerful and grace-filled future, and love the reflection in the mirror. I believe that every day is a day to grow, learn, heal, and change. That's why I started my company, thinkunbroken.com, which is an online training and healing and personal growth platform where you get everything that I know about how to get motivated, be accountable, get out of the vortex, and become the hero of your own story through community, connection, and commitment. For more information, visit thinkunbroken.com. Please listen closely as you may learn just one thing that will help you be unbroken. And please share this episode with at least three of your friends because we all need community and connection in our healing journey. And be sure to DM me and tag me on Instagram at Michael Unbroken so that I can say hi. 
I just want to thank you again for being a part of this, for listening and being a member of the Unbroken Nation. Now, let's get into today's show and make the world unbroken. The Reconciliation of the Man in the Mirror I have come to appreciate that great beauty lies in destruction. Rich Roll The words, from this moment everything changes, screamed in my head over and over again as I stood in front of the mirror, looking at the wreckage of my life. Everything was in tatters. My relationship was a lie. My health was failing. My friends couldn't stand me, or at least wouldn't admit it. My businesses were strong, but nothing else was. I couldn't stop getting fucked up to numb myself, and it was costing me everything. Tears dripped down my cheeks, pulling on the countertop of the sink in my brand new apartment, washing away my girlfriend's mascara that sat next to my toothbrush. We had just moved into this new place, and our intention was to make it our home, yet I had already sullied it with the perfume of another woman. The cold of that November day had somehow seeped into the house, and the chill carried with it the scent of failure. Though failure felt familiar, I decided that I'd had enough. I could no longer stand to look back at the face of the person in the mirror because I was ashamed of my reflection. That reflection, that obese, addict, piece of shit, asshole, cheater, was not me. At least not on the inside. I knew that somewhere there was more to me than who I was. I knew that somewhere in that blackness, there was the real me. We are the stories that we tell ourselves. And I was telling myself the story of a little boy who had been hurt over and over again by the people that were supposed to protect him. I lost the vision of what I wanted in life somewhere between escaping that hell and creating a new one. My story was one of self-loathing, being scared of my potential, and not honoring my truth by moving towards what I needed. I was crippled by the fear of being happy. How could the boy from a broken home be loved, find happiness, or seek greatness? I couldn't reach towards being the person that I knew I could be because I was telling myself that I didn't deserve to be strong, happy, and loved. I made the story of not being capable my reality, and thus, it became true. As I looked into my eyes, reflected in the mirror, something happened that to this day, I will never understand. I killed the old me. I felt like the person who I was in that mirror was an imposter of the person that I am, and they had to go. It wasn't my physical body that I was trying to get rid of. It was that fractured and shattered version of myself, my psyche and mental state that was guiding my decisions and leading me down the path of destruction. I told myself time and again that I would change, but I never did. After finally hitting rock bottom, I was awakened, and I knew this time I really meant it. I was done. That reflection would no longer represent who I was. I dragged myself out behind the woodshed, and I killed that motherfucker. Metaphorically, of course. I dug the deepest hole with the biggest shovel and tossed Evil Michael in. Evil Michael was the manifestation of everyone else's shit, ideas, and the torment, and I had enough. I knew saying I was done being a terrible person wasn't going to be enough, but I was willing to take on any challenges that lay ahead of me. I was ready to take on all comers. What the fuck else could I possibly do to sabotage my life? I was out of ideas. I did every awful thing that a person could do, not only to themselves, but to the people around them. I was the worst person that I knew. And I was done being that person. The only thing left was change. It was the middle of summer, and I was nine years old. Our water had been turned off due to unpaid bills, and it was scorching hot. Sitting on the front porch, I remember hearing my mother begging the man from the utility company, not to turn off the water. She pled, please don't do this. I have four little boys and my husband is at work right now. All of the bill money was tied up in the pill bottles stuffed under her mattress, the marijuana safely perched on top of the armoire, 
and bottles of vodka that lined the top of the fridge. The man from the utility company didn't heed her call for leniency, and the next thing I knew, it was 102 degrees, and we were without water. I watched the utility truck turn the corner as the man headed off to continue his workday. As the truck disappeared, my mother told me to go inside the house and get a wrench. I returned with the only wrench I could find. She pointed to the small manhole cover in the front yard, the same one that was just closed by the man, and told me to see if I could get it open. I locked the edge of the wrench to the bolt and turned as hard as I could. Sure enough, I was able to get it off. I was proud that I was as strong as the man who had just left, and I picked myself up from the ground with a smile. My mother then instructed me to reach down and turn the water control lever just enough that the spigot on the side of the house would drip. She told me not to turn it on too much or the water company would know and we'd be in trouble. For most of that blistering hot summer, we would bathe, drink, and cook from the water from the spigot on the outside of the house. Bucket by bucket, we survived from that supply. My brothers and I would take turns watching the bucket and waiting for it to fill. Sometimes I would sneak into our neighbor's yards and use their spigots to fill our bucket like a bandit in the night. I hated being the most impoverished family in the neighborhood of some of the most impoverished families in the city. It was that summer when I crept from house to house during the night that I swore to myself this reality, this chaos, would not be my future. Even at nine years old, I realized how fucked my life was. I remembered the promise I made to myself to be better than what the world expected of me while standing in the bathroom that day. The shame I felt as I buttoned the size 4 XL shirt seemed to trigger my memory of the moments filling that bucket. It wasn't just that summer that made me want something more from life. It was every second of my existence in those neighborhoods, around those people, and in that poverty. I remember the promise that I made myself to honor this idea that had always encompassed my thoughts, that I was destined for greatness. Even as a child, I knew I was destined for something more, and I believe that this is true for all of us. We are made of the experiences and circumstances of every single moment of our lives, and those moments are the baseline for everything we do moving forward. Killing evil Michael was a decision that I had to make. I was going to die if I stayed on the course I was headed, and I was more than likely going to be alone when it happened. I didn't know what my greatness was or would be, but I knew in that exact moment that whoever was on the other side of that mirror was not allowed to be in my life anymore. The most simple way for me to put this moment into words is this. I performed a complete 180-degree shift in mindset. Then I became an amazing person, and everything was great. The end. Did you know that recent studies show that CBD has incredible benefits for helping with physical pain? I have and suffer from chronic pain. I've mentioned it before. And with NW Recovery's Lavender Eucalyptus Salve, I have that pain dissipate like nothing else I've ever tried. I love NW Recovery not only because their products are non-psychoactive, which is really important to me, but also because they are created by Navy SEALs. So thank you so much for your service. If you're interested and you want to learn more about NW Recovery's CBD balm of lavender eucalyptus, then check out nw-recovery.com and use the keyword unbroken to save 20% on your first order. Again, that's nw-recovery.com and use the keyword unbroken to save 20% on your order. Now, that's obviously bullshit. I can't imagine a reality where a single moment changes everything forever. Those singular moments are usually just the beginning. And that was beyond true for me. My mirror moment was only the very and most absolute beginning of the incredibly intense and hard road that I was about to step foot on. The path that was right in front of me was barren. There was not a paved lane or tree in sight. And it would take years before the direction and the profound effects of doing the work would begin to take shape. The truth of that moment is that I was finally willing to take ownership. 
I also forgave myself. And this might be more important, but I guess it doesn't matter in which order change happens, as long as change happens. I don't know what called me to do it. Maybe it was Robin Williams' character in Good Will Hunting, as he confronted Will in his office telling him, It's not your fault. That's not a joke. I watched that movie over and over, imagining what it would be like to be embraced by another human being that could see that I was just a hurt little boy who needed compassion and someone to let him cry. That little boy was Will in the film, and me in real life. But I didn't have a Robin Williams. I had a mirror. I began to shake as I repeated the words and wrapped my arms around myself. I will talk about acceptance and ownership until the end of time, but what you have to understand is that there are things that are not your fault. Knowing and understanding that the shit that happened to you as a child wasn't your fault doesn't mean that you get to use those things as a scapegoat for the shit you have done or will do. What comes with this acceptance is freedom, freedom from the weight of it all, and you are the only one strong enough to lift that boulder. There were so many things that I blamed myself and took responsibility for, but I couldn't possibly be culpable for things out of my control. A seven-year-old cannot be responsible for his brother's going to bed hungry because he was told to cook dinner as his mother passed out drunk on the couch and accidentally put too much salt in the spaghetti. As an adult, I can rationalize the fact that it's utter bullshit to take even a grain of blame for that moment or many others like it. But as a child, my mother held that instance over my head for years. How could I not feel responsible? It is only logical that our adolescent brain would feel responsible for the endless shit that in reality was the responsibility of our caregivers. As children, we have not yet gained the capacity to make rational meaning around the experiences of trauma. When the people who are supposed to be responsible for us pass the blame on to us, then we become their scapegoat. And by proxy, we carry their mistakes as our responsibility. Have you ever blamed yourself for something that you knew was not your fault? Did it happen to you before you were old enough to understand that it wasn't your fault? If you answered yes to either of those questions, then you know how it feels to live with the guilt of other people's mistakes. I know you have lived with that guilt, and I have too. And as adults, it is our responsibility to accept the truth that most, if not all of the shit that happened to us in our childhood was not our fault. It has been through giving myself the space to forgive myself and not hold myself accountable for the indiscretions of the people that were supposed to support me and care for me that I've ultimately been able to support and take care of myself. Here is a list of things that are not your fault. Being the child of drug addicts, alcoholics, and racists. Being evicted. The phone. Power. Water and electricity bills not being paid, not having money for school field trips, being beaten, being molested, being bullied for being poor, wetting the bed, having a learning disability, being diagnosed with multiple mental health disorders, suffering covert incest, not being able to defend yourself, not being able to save your siblings, not knowing how much salt to use. I could go on, but you get the point. This is straightforward. Some things have happened in our lives that are just not our fault. And yet, we blame ourselves when other people should have been protecting us. If you want to heal, you have to stop accepting other people's mistakes as yours. I'm going to say that again. If you want to heal, you have to stop accepting other people's mistakes as yours. I had to decide to reconcile my past faults and the way that I viewed myself and spoke to myself. I chose to mend the relationship with myself by changing my beliefs of self-hatred and disgust to compassion and forgiveness. That moment in the mirror was so profound because for the first time, 
I was able to give myself care. By freeing myself of fault, it was also my first step in the decision to heal and move forward on the path without excuses. If you take anything away from this section, I want you to understand that the past cannot be what holds you back from your future. There is nothing that you can do about yesterday. It's gone. And that's just the way it is. You cannot move forward if you are stuck in the past. I'm not saying you pretend it didn't happen. That's how I ended up in the vortex. Hell, I'm not even saying let go of it. There are still times that I am pissed off about the shit that has happened to me, but I don't let my past interrupt my future. Instead, I leverage it. Ultimately, you cannot allow your history to keep you from becoming who you want to be. The past should be a place you look to for inspiration and power, even if it is dark. Look how far you have come. There is no question that you are an incredible human being. You should be so proud of yourself for every hurdle that you have jumped and every mountain you have scaled to be where you are. Look at where you are. Take a hard look. Is this the place that you want to be? Think about how far you have come while in the shackles of the past. Now imagine how far you will go when you free yourself from them. Becoming unbroken. Mirror moment. Facing yourself and truly looking into yourself can forever change your life. This prompt may be the most difficult in this book, but also the most important. Find a mirror and look at yourself in the eyes for five minutes, and then write down what comes up. You will be tempted to look away, and you may have feelings ranging from guilt to shame to pride. Allow them to exist without judgment. Do not go forward until you complete this mirror moment challenge. Now would be a good time to hit pause, to go in the bathroom or the living room or wherever you have a mirror, and spend the next five minutes with yourself stepping into this challenge. Welcome back. If you didn't hit pause and go and do the challenge, I want you to hit pause and go and do it right now. It's so important for what's next that I don't want you to miss this. This challenge is hard. I, I mean, there's no other word for it. It's hard. Looking at yourself, and if it was an experience for you like it was for me, and this was one of the first times you like truly looked at yourself, can be a really intense moment. And I want you to know that you're not alone in that moment. It's often the first time that we really see who we are. And when we come from a place of being invisible for so long, seeing ourselves for the first time can be a little bit unnerving, but it's also incredibly powerful. And you should be incredibly proud of yourself for having the willingness to do something so incredibly hard. This challenge is a challenge that most people will not take because our reflection is a truth of who we are. And it is an honest understanding of the place that we are in our life at this very moment. And because you are willing to step into this challenge, I'll, I congratulate you. I mean, there's no other way to put it. I congratulate you because. It's beautiful, and it can be a moment that you can use as a catalyst for as you move forward further into your life. One of the best things that you will do in this journey is to solidify the relationship that you have with yourself, because once that relationship is ironclad, nothing can stop you, my friend. Unbroken Nation, hope that you just got a tremendous amount of value from today's episode. I want to know what you think. Please do me a favor and review, rate, and share the episode with three friends on social media today. It would mean the world if you did, because ultimately at the end of the day, creating community and connection is how we heal generational trauma in the world. And I need your help to do that on Broken Nation. So if you're on iTunes or Spotify or wherever you are, please like comment, share, review. I want to know not only what you like about the show, but how I can make the show better, how I can make this further about helping you on your healing journey. So do me a favor. And when you do shoot me a screenshot of you making the review to my DM 
at Michael Unbroken on Instagram so that I can have a conversation with you, say hi, and more importantly, so I can share it with the Unbroken Nation. Thank you so much, my friend. Hey, my friends, we will be right back to the show, but I have a question for you. Are you struggling with the impact of childhood trauma? Well, know that you're not alone. I'm here to let you know that I'm starting a brand new weekly coaching group that includes a year of live coaching, accountability, support, habit and goal setting, and more. I'm starting a wait list for the group right now, and I'm only taking a handful of people. And I'll let you know that through this personalized coaching, we'll work together to help you understand how your childhood trauma has shaped your beliefs, behaviors, emotions, and will help you create a roadmap for healing and growth. Right now, you can schedule an absolutely free coaching session with me and get put on the wait list if you go to thinkunbroken.com. My friends, it's your time to turn your trauma into triumph, breakdowns into breakthroughs, and become the hero of your own story. And I'm here to support you in doing that. Just go to thinkunbroken.com to register for a free coaching call with me and to get put on the wait list for the brand new weekly coaching program.